Hi, my name is Deborah Fowler. And I'm going to introduce Python and Turtle Graphics. So to give you an example what Turtle Graphics does, it's essentially a symbol that looks like a turtle, or in our case is going to look like an arrow, and it has orientation, position, and properties. And we're going to use it to draw on a Tekinter window, which is the window graphic system that we're opening and drawing on. You can see here I've drawn a sunflower. Let me run this one to show you what we're going to do today. I'm going to start off with a simple square. We're going to introduce loops and then functions, and then we're going to proceed to create this idea of rotating squares. There's many ways you could do this. For example, these are some examples done in Python. You could also have done it in Houdini. Um, the process is the same, but we're going to focus on turtle graphics. So to start with, let's just take a starting file. I'm in Genie. There are a couple ways I'm going to show you to run this. So I'm going to start by typing in import turtle. And that's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. Right now this is untitled, so I'm going to save this. I'll just save it to my desktop and we'll call it demo.py. The .py identifies it as a Python file. So we now have imported a library of functionality, or turtle, and we're going to use that to draw. So turtle.forward will move the turtle 100 units. Let me go ahead and play that. You can see it opened and closed very quickly, and that's because on Genie in particular, it's not keeping that window, that drawing window open. So I'm going to use a command called exit on click, which will keep the window open until I click it. So you can see here, it's taken the turtle from the origin and drawn 100 units. The turtle is represented by this little arrow. So, so far so good. If I click on it, it closes. Another way that you can run Python is through idle. And in here, this is an interactive Python shell. I can say import turtle, and I could say turtle.forward. And that all works, it draws my turtle. But the problem with this is, if I close this shell, there's no file, okay? So let's go back into idle. I can either bring in a file or I can write one. Let's show you how to write one. So I'm going to do a new file, and I'm going to say import turtle, turtle.forward, I'm going to use the for short form, and if I say run now, it'll ask me to save it. I'm going to go to the desktop, and let's call this demo python, or demo idle.py, and now you can see that it draws the same thing. In this case, I didn't have to use turtle.exit on click because idle keeps the process open. Okay? There's one other way we could look like Linux. We could open up a CMD or a command prompt window and run Python from here. Python like this will open up a shell, an interactive shell. I'm going to exit out of that. Instead, what I'm going to do is go to my desktop and just run that Python script that I've written. So Python demo.py. As you can see here, it runs the script. So there's the advantage of having a file. Okay, let's continue and create a square. So I'm going to draw the turtle forward. Then I'm going to turn the turtle left. So you can see that the turtle moved and now the arrow is pointing upright so that I can draw my next line. So I'm going to do it again. And you can see now it's drawing forward, turning, forward, and turning. Let's do that a couple more times. Just cutting and pasting these to save time. And I run that, and you can see now we have a square. It also set the turtle to face down the x-axis. That's that last left turn. So we have a square, but that's a lot of code for just one little square. 
Let's neaten this up a little bit. So in order to provide us to repeat statements, we have loops. There's different types of loops, while well, loops and for loops. I'm going to introduce a for loop, so I'm going to get rid of three of these. I'm going to package this or wrap it around a for loop. So for i in range 0 through 4, so 0, 1, 2, 3, when it's more than 4 or equal to 4, it stops repeating. I put a colon to indicate that that's the start of my for loop. I'm going to tab because in Python, spacing or formatting is what determines what the body or the content of this loop is. So what statement should it repeat? So it's going to repeat for i in range 0 through 4. It's going to go forward 100 units and then turn left. So you can see that the same result happens, but the code is much cleaner. We can go one step further and wrap this into a function. So this is a loop. And we're now going to make this a function called draw square. How do we do that? We use the word def. We call this function some name. I'm going to call it draw square. Open and close parentheses, colon. That now is going to be a function. And we're going to tab these lines in. So this is now the body of this function. So when we call draw square, it is going to execute this. Now, if I run this right now, we've created a function, but we haven't actually called it. So we've put aside that code and said, OK, when you call draw square, that's a function that you can call any time, any number of times, but you need to call its name. So now it's going to execute that code that I've created. So if I run this, I'm back to where I was. My code is a lot cleaner and neater and allows me to go a little further. So let's say we wanted a square of a certain size. We can create parameters for a function. So in this case, I'm going to create a parameter called size. I'm going to use that size to determine how far or how much I'm moving my turtle forward. I'm going to send in a value so that this argument that I'm sending in gets assigned to that parameter. In other words, this value 100 when we call draw square, it's assigned to the value or the variable size, which is actually called the parameter, and it's going to be used inside some of those statements. So if I run this now, you can see it's the same result because I assigned 100. If I change this, now I'll get a tiny little square. So that allows me to have a parameter so that I can draw various different squares. So for example, I might want to draw another square two squares. And now I have a little square and a big square. Okay, so that's the process. Let's go one step further with this. Let's actually create a variable. Let's say I have a variable called Kermit. And Kermit is equal to 50. I can also send in a variable name. And what will happen is it will evaluate that value to 50 and assign size 50. So if I run this now, I have a square of size 50. Now, you wouldn't want to use Kermit. That's not a very meaningful variable name. You might want to call that size or my variable size or what have you. So meaningful variable names helps to make the code more readable. Now, I'm using Kermit. It's not happy because it doesn't exist. Change that to my new file name, variable name, and done. OK. Now that's good, but this is a little messy. We can go one step further. We could actually create this into an overall function. Often other programming languages, main is a special function. In Python, it is not. But let's go ahead and neaten up our code and call this main. And then tab this so that this is the body of my function. And call main. And now we have everything encapsulated in a function so that we have everything neat and tidy. If I run this, it has the same behavior. OK. So now, what if we want to create that rotated square? Well, there's a little more to it. I'm just going to bring this forward so that you can see. This is an idle. This is doing much the same thing, but now we're actually rotating the square. So in this case, my draw square function is going to become a little more interesting. 
I have an intermediate function called draw square pattern, which is re repeating or looping drawing that square. And then I have in my main a setup for my window size, titling the particular window, drawing, doing short form for my turtle so I don't have to do so much typing, and then calling my function to draw, keeping the window open until I'm done. So let's walk through that. Let's develop this as we go. So before we continue, let's just review. So we started off typing in commands sequentially. So we moved our turtle forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. We then introduced the concept of loops. So rather than retyping in information, we wrap this in a for loop. So for some value i, which is considered an iterator, go and repeat these statements that are in the body of the loop. For 0, check to see if it's less than 4. It is. For 1, less than 4, yes. 2, yes. 3, yes. And then when it gets to 4, it says, nope, you're not less than 4. And it just continues on. It doesn't execute the loop. So we have another square. We expanded that concept to drawing in a function. So we wrapped our loop into a function. So now we have a function called draw square, which has set aside those that code, if you will, to draw when I call that function. I also added a top block comment. Top block comment should include the name of the program and a description of what it does, author, date, what you need to input to run the program, and what you'll get for output. And then finally, we took that and went a step farther and added parameters. So we added parameters so that we could send in information to that function when we call it. And it will still function, but now I can give it values. We then went one step further and wrapped it in main. So just closing these. As you can see here, I wrapped it in main. And then I can call my function as many times as I want, which is what we're going to do next. So let's continue on. So how do we go from here, where we're drawing a simple square, to something more complicated, like this, where we're drawing nested squares? Well, there are several aspects to this that I want to discuss. Let's first start with some of the mechanics. So you'll notice that main is being used for a lot of setup. There's a draw square pattern where we're calling things multiple times. And then there's our original draw square where we're adjusting. So let's go through these in steps. What I want to start with too is just getting you used to drawing multiple squares. So let's do that. So let's start with some good practices. First of all, Rather than main here, I'm going to call this draw square pattern. Because this is where I'm going to draw multiple squares and it's not really a setup of any kind. So I want to reserve main for kind of just the bare, get this thing ready type of routines. And I'm going to call draw square pattern. These eventually could also be in another file, which we could import, and we'll get to that later. But right now, you can see that the functionality is the same. It's just a matter of neat type. Let's add a few more things in here. So our turtle setup, for example, turtle.setup. Let's make that a window of the size that we want and title it. same kind of thing. Again, run as you go. It never hurts to check. I have turtle exit on click. I'm going to move that also inside of main. So it's all neat and tidy. And I'm also going to set a few more parameters. Turtle.speed of zero says draw as fast as you can. So it's really fast. Okay, so now Let's, want, let's say we want to draw multiple squares. 
to start out, let's just move them along a line. So for example, I might start at the left hand side. So if I take and divide 750 by 2, that's 375. So I could start my squares at that point. But in fact, what I'm going to do is add a couple of things. So curl that pen up, curl that pen down, and I'm going to set my position to whatever position that I ask, or we could do, let's do X position, Y position. And I'm going to call this X pose, Y pose, because those are going to be arguments to my draw square. And it's going to set, pick the pen up, set the position, put the pen down, and then draw my square. So in here, what I'm going to do when I call this is I'm going to send those X and Y values. So in this case, I'm going to start on the left hand side, and then I'm going to add the number of times that I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to use a loop, and I'm going to set the loop counter to i, and I'm going to multiply by the size, so my bare size, and then on y, it's just going to be at the base. So let's put that in a loop, and let's tab over, and then run. And you can see that I have them drawing from the edge of the window onward. I could also space these out so that I could take into account the size of the window. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I want to do is go ahead and calculate this room the square takes. But what I'm going to do is take the number of the space that I have, subtract off the room the squares take, and then divide by 11, because of course we have one more gap than we have squares, and that will give me my gap size. So let's go ahead and run that. Now you'll notice that this isn't quite correct because we want to start one gap over on that first one. So really, we want to take minus that plus the gap. That's our starting point. We could even call this start at equals half the resolution of the screen plus gap. And that makes our equation a little more readable for the next person coming in. So you can definitely code so that it's more legible. Okay, so now we see that our squares are spread out the way we wanted. Okay, so now that you've gotten used to the squares, and we've set them in a certain position, now what we're going to do is change this around a little bit because we're going to do rotated squares. But this will give you a basis for your quilting exercise. The rotated squares is a little bit of a variation. It perhaps could be a quilt square, for example. Um, what you want to do is be careful of how you set up your square. Because in a 3D package, you have pivots, you can move them. But once you've drawn a square and turtle, you want to have drawn it correctly. So let's go back and change this. Now in this case, I'm not going to need these anymore because when I draw those squares, I'm really drawing each of them at the center. So if I take a look at what that module looks like, it looks like this, right? So they're really drawing, they're changing in size, they're rotating, but they're all centered around the origin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and leave that as setting the position at zero, zero, but we're gonna have an angle. So let's add an angle and let's rotate that. So I'm going to say turtle.left and some angle. Okay. So now that I've changed my function, I need to change my call to my function. So instead of having a value here, I'm just going to have an angle. Let's say 10 for the moment. I'm going to get rid of this because this isn't required anymore. And let's go ahead and run that. 
And you can see that it's drawing, but it's drawing at the corner of the circle, which is not going to produce our pattern. So we need to change our function a little. Happily, this is fairly easy. Let me reduce this down to two so you can get a better idea and increase this to 300, just so we can see. So what we've got are two squares. Now the first square draws, and the second square, in this case, draws again. I'm going to create another draw square, just so I have one that isn't rotating at all. And let's call this right here. This will be the outside, because I want one that's actually square, especially if I was going to use this for a quilt I would want one that hadn't rotated at all. There's various ways we could do that. Let's do zero, because the angle is zero. So you can see now we have our first square, and then we draw two additional squares that are rotated. You'll notice that the turtle is pointing in the direction of this last square. So what we need to do is draw the square centered at the center. Well, if I think about a regular square, it's some size. If I move my drawing point down to half the size in X and Y, it will draw around the center. So we can do that. When it's tipped, we just have to remember to move the turtle back along this axis, this local axis. That's easy enough because we can just use backward command. So we can say move this way half the size, move that way half the size, and then it will draw around that center. So that's where we're headed. Uh, so. so we probably also want to use the whole window. So let's change that initial size to 700. And you can see here we've got large squares, which aren't drawing at the center yet. Let's go in here and change this code. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that position, but then we're going to move along the turtle backward from where it's facing half the size. So we can take size times 0.5, and that's half the size. And then turn left 90 degrees so that we're now facing, so that when we go backwards, we're going to face down that local axis, t dot backward. And again, size times 0.5. Now rather than doing two calculations, I can also define a variable to keep that information, which would be slightly more efficient and perhaps a little bit easier to read. And then after I've backed up like that, I then want to change my turtle back to its original orientation, so I'm going to then turn right. And then I put my pen down, and again I'm using T, I should probably write turtle, or I could send in my turtle to this function. Let's do that right now. Save us a little writing, so let's go ahead with this, and send us a T, and then we're going to go in here, call this Turtle, and receive that as t, send that as in t. So I'm just adding a parameter to send in my turtle, so I don't have to type so much. Oops, we forgot something in here. So, so we have t, there's where my culprit is, t, and let's run that. Okay, so now we can see that it is actually centered on the center. Our sizes aren't in decreasing, but they are rotating. As you can see, we've got our original square, which in the code is this one that we're calling in our draw square pattern right here. That's our first one. And then we have two subsequent ones. So now we need to size this down. Well, we know that these squares are sizing ex exponentially, so what we can do is use the power function. So what we're going to do, instead of my variable size being 700, we're now going to take that size and use a value. So I'm going to call this size shrunk. Shrunk, shrunk. We take that size and take our variable size and multiply by 
an exponential. And in this case, if we did 1.2, that's an exponential function. I'm going to add 1 to that because I don't want the value 0. And what I get is increasing, which is not exactly what I want. So you can see here, they're getting bigger. And that's not actually what I want. Kind of hard to see. Let's do 20. Cool pattern, but not what I want. What I want them to do is trick. So what I can do is power of a number that's above 1 will increase, power below 1 will decrease. I'm just going to put this 1 over. And now you can see that they are decreasing in size, except they're not, because I haven't used this as my variable. So I need to call this size. That will send in my new value. Now when I execute it, I can see that they are indeed shrinking. My angle is not the best choice for that particular one, so let's change this angle to 12.5. And now we can see that we have our rotating squares. There's a few other properties we can change on the turtle. We could, for example, change this turtle to have a certain width. So I'm going to set turtle width to be 3. And if I do that, you can see now I have much thicker lines. Because we're drawing from the outside going in, our smallest square is drawn last. We can also fill these. So a little different effect. Rather than doing turtle width, I'm just going to comment this out. We can actually do a filled. So let's go ahead and fill this. I'm going to fill it with two colors. I'm going to set up two colors, which let's go ahead a little further and set this up. So colors, and that's going to be equal to two strings. It's going to be a list, which we're going to cover later. We'll call it black and white. And you can choose whatever you want. And in this case, I'm going to use that modulus function that we talked about. So the first one I want to set turtle deck color, which is the turtle attribute, to be black. Because I have a white background, so I want to see that one first. And in this case, I am going to set the color to be a select color. And how am I going to select that color? Well, I'm going to create a variable called select color and set that to be equal to colors and this is going to be i plus one because i've already drawn one so i want to go one more and i'm going to modulate by two so every other one i am going to create black and then white and then black and then white okay so i set my turtle up it should be ready to go and in here, all I need to do is set up, oops, I've got a turtle in there. What is that? There we go. Turtle.color. Sorry, turtle.begin fill. It's already got the color. That's its property at the time. Turtle.end fill. And those are given uh, filling in, in, in a polygon. So if I run this now, you can see that I get filled in boxes or squares. So that's my first square, which is black. And then I change this to be plus one. Here's what happens if I don't do that. I'm going to have two black squares at first, and it looks odd. right? I don't have that nice little matching. So let's go ahead and change that to plus one. So I've already drawn that there. So you can see what I'm getting is filled polygons. That's cool. So that you could actually use as a quilt square. We'd have to do a little bit more work with this. Um, the one thing we'd want to do is be able to move it wherever we want. That wouldn't be too hard. Uh, we already have it set up so that we can send in the value size. So that's something that we can do quite easily because my original size is here. Let's make this a little more general and call this pat size. Okay, and this we call pat size. Now when we draw a square, we actually want to send in pat size. So just to keep it consistent, I'm going to send in 700 so you can see that nothing gets broken. It's exactly the same thing. But if we decided 
that we didn't want that size, we could simply change this to being a different number. So parameters allow you to more easily change a function. So you can see that we now have the ability to move this around. So we could draw this pattern twice. Let's go ahead and draw these maybe 200. And we'll do a square pattern turtle. Let's do another, let's do one at 300. And let's move this one. And 300 units so that it's out of the way of the first one and then the y value okay and i'm still out here so i still need to use turtle here because i'm sending it in as a variable and let's go ahead and do that but you're going to see that it draws in the same place and it's also drawing this really weird it's like oh that's the problem and the reason is we've used a set position here but when we go into here, we've also used the set position. So we don't have the ability to position this. So let's change that. Let's say X pose, Y pose are my positions that I'm going to put this pattern at. Well, I'm going to send in those as well. So let's call X pose, Y pose when we draw our square. Now we change the calls to the function. We need to change the actual parameters. Let's just call it X and Y. And then we're going to add X here and Y here to our new position so that it takes into account those values. So now let's set this to 300 and 0. We no longer need this. And let's set this to 0 and 0. Okay, so I'm going to draw my pattern out 300 and then draw the second pattern. There's still a problem here. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So there's my first pattern. And you see it comes back and it's tilted. And that's a problem. So what we want to do is reset our turtle at the end of drawing. So to create this to be a good function, we're going to set turtle.heading. back to be zero. And let's not move that out quite so far. Let's move it out maybe 200 units. So there we are. We're drawing our first one. And then we're drawing our next one. And let's move that guy over a little bit too. So again, we'll move this one minus 200 units. So now we have a movable, scalable object that we could use in our quilt. Okay. So let's go one step further and add a row of these patterns. What I'm going to do is take and determine the size, which is going to be 750 divided how by how many we have. So I'm going to use six. Now in Python, Two, I would have had to put 0, 0.0 to get the correct number. In this case, I don't need to do that because it's Python 3 and it'll divide integers by integers. So I've got the size now. I can replace this with that size to fill my horizontal distance. And now create a loop. And tap this in. <clears throat> now we have the size, but we don't want to start at 200. We don't want to start at some position, which I'm going to call start at. So my start at position will be in move to the left. So I'm going to do half the negative of sub 50. So in other words, half move to the left over. But then my pattern actually starts in the middle of the square. So I need to add half that size. Okay, so now we know where we're starting at, but for each additional one, we need to move the number of squares that have been drawn before. So I'm going to multiply this by i. Okay, so I move to the left and then progressively go along x. If we run this, we can see that we're running our patterns in a row. 
and we might want to reduce the number of steps in our pattern just to make the draw a little faster. Definitely reduce your drawing time uh, when you're testing and then you can increase it. But you can see here, this isn't going to take too long. And we now have our patterns neatly fitting into our window. Okay, another option would be to size your window according to the size of your pattern. Be a little careful to advise the user if you happen to have user input that they need to stay within a certain range um, because your screen is only so large, but you get the idea. We might want to add some more bells and whistles to this. We could add, for example, a choice between filling or not filling. Um, that would use an if statement and perhaps parameter. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a, another parameter in this list and let's call it uh, fill. And fill, fill square. Let's call it fill square. So it's a little bit more meaningful. I can set fill square to be equal to 1. And that way it has a value. And if I want to change it, I can do that. So let's do every other one. Let's set fill square equal to i mod 2, which will give me a number between 0 and 1. So that way I'm giving it a value of whether or not it's going to be filled, but I need to change this in my parameter list of what I'm sending it. So I'm going to say this is fill it. Okay, And then in here I also need to send it to my square because that's where I actually have the fill commands. I'll just add this in here. And then in my draw square, fill it. And in here is where I'm going to put my if statement. If fill it equals one, or I could have just said fill it. Then we do this. And cut and paste that, also the end. Tap that in, tab this in, whoops. There we go. Okay, so now if I run this, you'll see I get a line and I get a fill. So it's going to do every other one. So again, you can use parameters to make your patterns more interesting. Um, I could also change the colors. I could change the direction, for example. So that would be interesting as well. Okay, so one other thing you could do organizationally wise is you could actually put this into another file. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is save this as, call this draw square pattern. And that is going to become my file that I'm going to call from another file. So I'm going to get rid of main. And this is now an independent file. Now right now, nothing's being called. If I run it, nothing's going on. But what I can do, but what I can't do is create a new file, which I'm going to call main. And save that on my desktop. Create this. And so now, draw square pattern, if I run this, it's, it's going to have problems, right? What I want to do is import the turtle in here. And I'm going to use from draw square pattern. I don't use the .py. Import everything. What that does is it imports this file. We no longer need this because that's being imported as well. And if I run this, it now does exactly the same. So what I'm doing is I'm referencing this file. I'm bringing it in as if it's a library. It's not really a library. It's a file, some script that I've written that is designed to perform a function, which is draw square. 
rotating squares. So it still works, but what this allows me to do is create a file where I can test things, and then, so right now this doesn't do anything, it does nothing. But I could test this out, make sure it's working, and then add it to whatever program I wanted. So for example, if I need to do five patterns, I could have five separate files that I was importing, and that will make your job easier. So again, modularity is key. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.